Thank you for joining us at Mechanics Institute for this online program. The Writer's Lunch is a casual and virtual brown bag lunch activity on the third Friday of each month. Look forward to craft discussion, informal presentations on all forms of writing, and excellent conversation. My name is Nico Chen, and I am the program manager here at Mechanics Institute. For those who are new to Mechanics Institutes, welcome. Mechanics Institute was founded in 1854 and is one of San Francisco's most vital literary and cultural centers in the heart of the city. Mechanics Institute features a full-service general interest library, an internationally renowned chess club, ongoing author and literary programs, and the Cinema Lit film series. A recent article in the San Francisco Standard describes us as the coolest library in downtown San Francisco. Um, we are also a work a remote work sanctuary. Come see this for yourself by joining us for a free tour, which happens every Wednesday at noon. You are also welcome to join us on a special evening tour tonight, Friday, January 19th, starting at 5 p.m. Light refreshments will be available during the welcome reception and complimentary beverages will also be shared. We are also starting off this new year with a new free writerly event for our Mechanics Institute members. Mark your calendars for our inaugural writers meet on Saturday, February 10th, 2024. Bring two pages of your latest masterpiece or work in progress to share with fellow wordsmiths. Be ready to give and receive constructive feedback and forge connections with other writers. Embark on a writing journey for this coming Lunar New Year. Together, we create a haven for wordsmiths, storytellers, and aspiring authors. Please visit our website at www.milibrary.org to learn more about our upcoming programs. Today's theme for our Writer's Lunch is how to craft a bio. This discussion will include a Q&A with the audience. Please add your questions to the chat and I will read them aloud during the latter half of today's Writer's Lunch. Please also mark your calendars for the Writer's Lunch on Friday, February 16th for the topic, Writing About Love and Loss in Relationships with Lauren Alwyn, Leslie Kirk Campbell, and Nona Caspers. This event will be moderated by the one and only Cheryl J. Bizet Boutte. And I am also adding um, the information about all of these wonderful upcoming events to the chat box with the links. <clears throat> so you're welcome to also just um, um, find those links uh, and register now. I will now go over our speaker bios. Award-winning author and Pushcart Prize nominee Cheryl J. Bizet Boutte is an Oakland multidisciplinary writer whose autobiographical and fictional short story collections, along with her lyrical and stunning poetry, artfully succeed in getting across deeper meanings about the politics of race and economics without breaking out of the narrative. An inaugural Oakland Poet Laureate runner-up, she is also a popular teacher, literary reader, presenter, storyteller, curator, and MC host for literary and poetry events. Let's do a quick wave to the wonderful Cheryl Bizet Boutte. Hello! <laughs> Joey Garcia is an editor and author platform coach. She helps writers get known while they're writing their book. So when it's published, there's an audience waiting to read it. Joey's clients have been interviewed by and have bylines in the Wall Street Journal, Smithsonian Magazine, Miss Magazine, CNN, The Tamron Hall Show, among others. Joey is the indie author of When Your Heart Breaks, It's Opening to Love, and has been featured in HuffPost, USA Today, Deutsche Welle, KVIE Public Television, Global Woman TV Sweden, Australia's Ticker News, and Slate's Dear Prudence podcast. In 2017, Joey established the first ever literary fellowship in Belize, her birthplace. With literary agents, she leads an annual retreat in Belize for writers from all over the world. Let's give a warm welcome to Joey. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, we have Jeannie Grossenbacher, Master of Education, novelist, poet, certified editor, educator, and publisher. Founded Elk Grove Writers and Artists in 2012 and JGKS Press in 2017. She brings 36 years of experience teaching English language arts to adolescents and adults. Her debut American Madam series novel, Madam of My Heart, was a silver medalist for historical fiction in the 2018 Independent Publisher Awards and received the Kirkus Star. Madam and Silk was runner-up for historical fiction in the 2020 National Indie Excellence Awards. 
Her novel, Madame in Lace, was published in December 2021, and Kirkus Reviews calls it a gripping trip through Napoleonic France. Details about the revolutionary plots are revealed in tiny parcels, creating a strong sense of suspense that will keep readers turning pages. Glimpses, her first poetry collection, was released in September 2022. Her poetry blends themes of childhood wonderment, the blessings of ordinary things, and the pain and joy of life experience. Her next historical novel, Filigree in Flame, the first in a new series called Artistic Women, will launch in February 2024. And let's give a warm welcome to the wonderful Jeannie Grossenbacher. And Cheryl, please take it away. Thank you, Nico. And as always, thank you to the Mechanics Institute. I see so many familiar faces on the screen. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, Joey and Jenny. Uh, I'm gonna launch right into my first question. Uh, and, and I'll pose it to you first, Jenny. In general, what do you see as the top three components of a memorable bio? Well, first of all, it has to fit your personality um, and, and the type of, of writing you do. Um, my example as a historical fiction and poetry author is that um, historical fiction may be one of the closer genre uh, uh, categories to um, to literary fiction, and so I have to kind of um, I have to skirt the edge between uh, formality and informality in mm -hmm. my writing about myself. So, um, but I would say that if somebody has, for example, light romance or comedic uh, sci-fi. Their um, author bio should reflect a little bit more about, you know, who they are as a person. And if they are, if they are rather quirky and they know themselves to be that, then that should come across in their author bio. Thank you. And how about you, Joey? I think the first question for me is what am I going to use the bio for? That will determine the components. Um, I think we are often taught that there's one bio, you know, your author's bio, your writer's bio. But um, I think most writers actually need five or six different bios, depending on what it's for and what you are working on calling into your life. So if you're looking for an agent, you're writing a different kind of bio than if you're trying to get media attention for a book that's already in existence. So I want to just that that's the pre uh, question, what am I going to use this bio for? And then from there, um, determining um, those components. Um, so one way to think of it is, if you're, um, for example, putting a bio together, maybe for your website, or for the back of a book, go with um, a bit about the book, a bit about you, and always a hook, there should always be a hook the thing that's going to interest the reader, um, the agent, you know, the writer. So thinking in that way, I think um, the other thing is when you write your bio and you're considering what it's going to be used for, don't make it a kitchen sink bio. Just because you're quite accomplished, maybe you have an, um, an MBA, it may not belong in that bio, which may be about just your writing life. Um, and similarly, if you're writing a bio that is intended for, say, the media, you don't put all your literary accomplishments in it. It just makes you seem like you don't understand how the media works. So it's really more complicated and um, uh, more, uh, what should I say, um, exciting <laughs> to think about like what should really fit in there. So what you're really saying, Joey, is that you really can't have that one bio um, that suits everything, um, that you almost have to look at what you're doing with it and then create it at that point. But there should be some standard elements, um, I would think, that should always be there. And what, what would you say those standard elements might be? Well, um, your name. And again, you've got to think about what you're using it for. So if I'm using it to um, let people know that I'm an editor, that's a different kind of bio. 
but the standard elements, your name and anything you've done related to the book that you are currently promoting, that's what I would include in there. And I would really think two, three, four times about whether your advanced degrees belong in your bio. Most of the time they don't. Okay. How yeah. about you, Jenny? Well, I really agree about the audience. Um, being aware of the audience that you are presenting the bio to. Um, example, Mechanics Institute, for me, as writing a bio for this, uh, represents a, a quite a literary influence in, uh, in California and the West. And so my bio does highlight my accomplishments and my degree. Yet, if I were going to be presenting a workshop um, about... Um, oh, say writing setting, I may not do that. You know, I may have a much briefer bio, a much chattier bio, depending on uh, the audience that I'm addressing. Yeah. So I do agree with Joey very much. It, it's the audience. It's who, who are those people going to be that you're, uh, you're giving your, your soul to at that moment? Yeah. So with that in mind, I would say, you know, you you may not want a downloadable bio on your website. You may want a basic bio, but you want to craft a bio for each presentation that you're giving. Um, like you, Cheryl, I've, I'm a Pushcart nominee, but it's not in my bio because it really wasn't related to what I'm doing today. Um, so thinking about that, thinking about your awards, which ones fit, like Ginny's awards that are listed related to her novels are a fit for her presentation today, that kind of thing. Right. Um, but then it also fits that you can include things that you feel others might be interested in, depending on the audience that you're writing to. So in my case, as the moderator of an event, I think that the push card gives a little bit of credibility as do awards for novels and other things. So it's really it's really a, a balancing act uh, in terms of, of like you say both of you are saying of what you're actually um, the audience you're actually talking to. Uh, let's delve a little bit more into content though. Um, there are people who write in different genres. So content and style, I guess I'm I'm really going for here. Is it okay to write? in the genre that you are trying to sell. So for example, if, if I'm writing a science fiction piece, uh, should I write a bio in a kind of scientific, swirly whirly kind of um, way? Is that helpful or is that um, detrimental? Um, well, I think again, it depends on your audience. If you're sending it to um, a, a sci-fi magazine that you know uses bios like that, then yes. But um, again, if you're trying to get an agent, then maybe you're going to seem a little quirky and difficult to work with unless you know that huh? agent likes those kinds of bios. So, you know, it really is um, a look back at um, this is about marketing. This is about how you're presenting yourself in the world to a particular audience at a particular time to promote a particular thing. And getting really clear on that helps to understand what the content of the bio should be. Um, you mentioned awards, and I hope you're going to come back to that because I really want to talk about that as well. Okay, and Jenny, what do you think about the content question? Um, I, I just really believe that um, you're presenting your best self to that audience. You know, um, if you are, uh, uh, if your background includes, um, being an editor for a random house and you are in uh you know marketing yourself to a writer's conference that's very important and should be mentioned but perhaps if you're already an author and maybe you could just say i'm an established author or established indie author and you don't necessarily have to write down all of your titles so <clears throat> once again i think it's a matter of choosing uh, what you think your audience is going to care about at that moment. And I, I'm sorry to keep saying audience, but 
that it, you have That's to engage yeah. to be out there. Yeah. So, so Joy, what did you want to say about awards? You, you look like you just really want to get this out. <laughs> Do I? No, I was listening to Ginny. Um, I, I agree with her 100%. So um, I, I think it's important, once again, um, whether you're whether you're applying to and using awards um, as a marketing device, which is one thing, and um, versus the kinds of awards that are really recognitions of your writing and of your, your literary achievements. Um, and then keeping in mind the difference between those two and who you're going to tell about those awards. So there are awards where maybe there's a hundred categories and pretty much everybody gets a prize, right? And then you can afterwards, you can buy the seals and this and that and the other thing. And that is generally um, a company that is making money off of promoting a book. Nothing wrong with that. It's great for marketing a book, especially for indie authors. And then there are um, coveted um, literary awards. You mentioned, you know, one that we both share. That's, that's um, we've been nominees, right? So that's a literary award that that I can't really just apply to and expect to get. Generally, someone has to um, nominate me for that, correct? That's correct. So that's very different. And that, that gives it a cachet that an award where, again, you know, I can apply and um, everybody who applies pretty much gets, gets a um, congratulations and a letter and stickers and we buy more stickers. That's a whole different level of awards. So if I'm... Um, if I am pitching an agent, if I'm pitching um, an opportunity that is rather high level, I may not put those kinds of awards, the ones I've basically purchased on my bio because um, whereas I could post them on Facebook and get a lot of people excited about my book who don't really know how the business works, that's great. It's used as a marketing device and that's the intention. But if I'm sending that to an agent, they may think, hmm, you may not really understand how this business works because that's an award anyone can purchase and win. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, let me let uh, Jenny um, weigh in on this. And then I want to come back because I, I really am, I'm, I'm a little concerned about how do writers know the difference? I mean, how do they find out? Uh, Jenny, <laughs> would you, would you, could you weigh in? No, I agree with uh, with Joey. Um, the there is a uh, a website called Ally A L L I that will talk to you about legitimate um, indie uh, awards mm -hmm. to apply to, and ones that have the most credibility, and ones that are not worth your time because they don't really count for anything. And so I always consult with Ally um, because there is a writer beware aspect of applying for awards. Um, some of these companies are fly by night and you're right, they do. They make money off of you by guaranteeing uh, that your, your, uh, your book uh, is going to appear on a marquee in Times Square. And then when you read the fine print, you're gonna find that it's only on for one minute flash and you've paid $500. And so if you wanna walk away saying, well, my book was you know, flashed in Times Square, well, maybe, maybe that might be fine, <laughs> but nobody saw it. So, um, so I agree, caution is the word. Okay, yeah, so let's get do. back to quickly add to that because Ally, I'm so glad you mentioned that, Jenny. And the other one is the Science Fiction Association. Is that, or um, they have Writers Beware. That's yeah. The, yeah, Writers Beware. And that's another great one to check with. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. So uh, getting back to the core of this discussion, um, how does a writer know when they're writing a bio uh, that they're writing the right kind of bio for the right uh, reasons and the right uh, venue. How, how, what kind of help is out there for writers to know how to do that? Jenny? 
you can go to the San Francisco Writers Conference and you can meet <laughs> and you can meet with editors uh, with Joey Garcia, who's a platform coach and editor, and you can meet with me. But there, uh, I believe last year there might have been 80 editors uh, that rotated throughout the editorial room, and there are a hundred uh, notable authors um, on the agenda uh, presenting information. Um, but apart from that, I think um, Writer's Digest, if you go through Writer's Digest frequently, they will ha uh, generally have information about how to set up uh, your online presence, your marketing presence. And so I would just try to go through the index of articles that they have uh, yeah. and, and so forth, because those are credible uh, sources. There are other conferences also that you can attend all over the place that have uh, generally, you're looking for something that has a marketing um, uh, strand. Yeah, I, teach a course, I actually teach a, a class on just writers' bios, um, and I've taught it around at different conferences, and I'm excited to say I'll be teaching it at more this year, because I think part of it is that I myself didn't know. I've learned by making mistakes and um and seeing things and making changes and talking to professionals. And I think that's a big part of it. What I'm saying is getting, there's online education that Ginny was just mentioning and she's also mentioning, which I agree, is talking to people and learning. Be in a, be in a place of, of reception and learning and asking questions and um, not so much, um, well, look at me and what I've done and you know, like ask yeah. questions. I've spent a lot of time just being a student and I still feel like I'm forever a student learning about how to do this. But um, um, it, it's hard for us to step back from ourselves and see what we're actually presenting to the world. So I think it's essential that we have someone that's a trusted friend who will give us honest feedback and that we are open to receive it. Because that's the other thing, and that um, sometimes I, sometimes I joke. Do you remember Bridezilla? Like you know the wedding yeah. thing. Like yeah. So we can be authorzillas, you know, the kind of like um, we're not really getting accepting feedback even when we ask for it and people are offering it to just soften and let ourselves be in a space of of receptivity and listening. We can really grow, and that way that the bio becomes an opportunity or or brings in opportunities and doesn't create obstacles. Well, how about the, the problem, Joey? The opposite problem of uh, help. I have trouble writing about myself. I just don't know what to say. I have this wonderful poem. I have this wonderful story, but I just can't sit down and write this bio. How, how, how do you help people like that? Well, we focus on first off, what is um, one interesting thing about them? And what and what is the one one thing that they're seeking right now? So I'm seeking representation for a novel, right? So Joey Garcia um, lives with a small dog and a big cat. I mean, you know, that kind of that's not true. But I'm just saying one interesting <laughs> thing about me, and um, and then you know one thing I'm seeking, right? So if you don't have a lot to put in your bio yet, you can still find material but keep it related as much as possible. The fact that you live in, I don't know, um, Sacramento and you're married with 12 children is not necessarily right for your bio unless it's part of the book that you're writing, right? Or the story you wanna get into the world. So, so really um, pull back from the, uh, the kitchen sink. I've said that before, but pull back and really focus on what belongs. Jenny? I would also add, uh, because I always approach things half intellectually and half emotionally, mm -hmm. um, that I would say, uh, get over the fear. You kind of have to step over yourself and put your, your feet on the mat and just say, okay, I'm going to put this out there. And it may not be perfect, because perfect doesn't exist. Right. And I'm going to, uh, I'll take a chance. And um, honestly, I learn every day, um, you know, from Joey, from Cheryl, from all the people that I know in the business, and also from several of you who attend my classes. You know, it, it's, it's just that someone will point out something and I will change it. One aspect of bios, along with what Joey mentioned, is that you want to update it all the time. 
you want to keep it fresh. Yeah. And uh, if you if you recently got another uh, accolade or another award, then you're going to add, add it on there. But then everything you add on, the other things have to go. So be willing to to be kind of hard about it because you're changing. And every uh, year you're going to be producing different things or doing different activities, getting involved in different clubs and organizations. And if you want to highlight that, then something else is going to have to go because um, because people get bored reading long bios. That is so, so, yeah. so good. And um, I'd love to just tag on to that and 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 say that most of us who have lived a while, as I have on the planet, have done many, many interesting things. And um, you have to edit those out of your bio as well. Think about most agents they have, or, or publishers, or you know, even people who might buy your book, a lot of them may be, let's say, in their 40s. And if you did something very interesting a long time ago, before they were born, they might be less interested, right? It's less interesting and less valid right now. So it's kind of a show me what you've done now business. The fact that maybe you, um, well, let's see, maybe you worked at Simon Schuster 40 years ago, may not be relevant to put in your bio anymore. In fact, it's not, but I'm, you know, may not be. So, so think about what's timely as well. Focus on the now. Okay, so you say focus on the now, but I have a question about how do um, new writers, nouveau writers focus on the now? If they've just written their first story and they're trying to pitch it, um, is it okay for them to talk about what their plans are, um, what they would like to do as a writer? What? How can they add content to their bio to make it meaningful and interesting if they're just starting out? I I think writers have to be very careful about being aspirational yes. in their bios because it becomes confusing and can make a person look like they're not a truth teller, which is gets really messy. Um, I saw a bio and a gentleman said that he, um, in the bio, he said he was going to turn his memoir, which hadn't been written yet, into a Netflix film. Does he have the power to do that? <laughs> no, it's aspirational, but also makes him look unprofessional and like he doesn't understand how the business works. So, but but to his mind, he's being aspirational. So be very careful about what you include. Um, if I'm a new writer, concentrate on something interesting. Uh, I live at the edge of the forest with, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just write one, and Ginny was referring to this earlier, write one interesting thing about yourself. Don't feel like your bio has to be any more than one or two sentences. In fact, sometimes it's better if it isn't. And don't necessarily look to a famous writer to copy their bio style because they got famous in the before times, before 4 million books a year were being published, which is where we are right now. 4 million books are being published every year. So think about what's interesting about you and, and just if you haven't, you don't have publications to list yet or anything else, just keep it one or two sentences, keep it tight. Jenny, what do you yeah, think? I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, you know, it it is difficult. I mean, I've been there and at the very beginning, what are you gonna say about yourself? You know, um, and so you have to start with what what it is you've established, what what kinds of groups you're involved with, um, and also it doesn't hurt. I remember in a very early bio, I had been um, a, uh, a a board member of the California Writers Club. Well, I I wrote that down because it was a way to at least connect with people uh, in the industry. I mean, they all know the California Writers Club, so it was therefore um, gave me a little credibility that I'm kind of serious. Great. So Nico, do we have audience questions? We actually have many, many audience questions, but we'll oh, start with Paul's. <laughs> um, I think Paul is asking about sort of adding one's positionality to one's bio. So what about including age, origins, location, family, even gender in one's bio? What do you think about that, Jenny? 
Well, if it's if it's important to the work you're doing and it's central to the themes or substance of what you are writing, uh, a sentence or two regarding that might be interesting and worthwhile. If it is not, then, you know, why do it? I think you have to ask yourself those things um, depending. And also, if you are issuing a bio that has that information in it, uh, and you're going to be giving, for example, a poetry reading, or you're at an open mic event where there's a lot of other people in in your same situation that might be interesting to put in. I'd be very careful, though, uh, about too much information, uh, personal information, because right. your bio right now goes out to the world. And do you want everybody to know how old you are? I mean, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Joey, what do you think? Uh, I'm 63. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I uh, so <laughs> I don't um, I don't know that I would ever put an put age in a bio. In fact, I would say no, unless you are very very young and publishing your first book, your first novel. You're 10, you're 11, you're 12. Then yes, but otherwise I would not. If it's very important to you to put an age in because you're talking about I don't know dating after 60. I might say something like um, Joey Garcia is a boomer, blah, 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 blah. I would put the generation in instead. Um, age, let's see. I put where I'm from Belize because I'm very active there and it's significant to my myself, my culture, born there and been working there for 20 something years. So for me, that's central. Um, but there's Jenny's right again, you know, that that just be it's curated. Your bio is curated. It's not um, it's it's not a resume, right? It's a curated uh, list of what uh, your accomplishments related to your book or your your speech or the workshop you're going to give at a writer's conference or the interview, the media interview you're trying to get. So I, I think I would ask you to think broadly. Um, I, I can't remember the other thing. It was age, look, uh, I'm sorry, um, where you're gender. from. Gender. Um, so my name is Joey. It causes lots of confusion and I don't include my gender. Um, and I, you know, I mean, sometimes it comes, it says she, but I don't, I don't think it's essential. I love that people get confused about it. I think yeah. it's, it's on them and I've been, you know, I've had this name forever. So yeah, that doesn't matter. Exactly. Any more questions, Nikos? I know we got a few. Sure, we we do have um, quite a few form based questions, and so there are there were two questions about whether or not we should be using the first person or third person in the bio, and also another person was asking about word count. Like, do we um, write um, for di like? Is there an, any different submission requirements as to a standard word count? I'd like to take the the person that you should be writing in, and then hand that second part over to Joey, if I may. Sounds like a plan. I, I really think third person is uh, is a, a good uh, fit for most uh, bio requests that I've ever written to. And I, I just think that it's professional. And, you know, if you are quirky, then that's going to come out in the examples that you place of the types of uh, information you want to give them. You know, you live on the edge of the woods, you had a spiritual experience when you were 25, and that's central to the work you're doing, you know. So um, I like third person very much. Joey, the second part. Uh, what was it again? Third person or remind me? what Word, word count. Oh, word, word count. count. Okay, yeah, that's great. So word count varies. Um, I always tell my writers, the the people who work with me to have a 50 word bio, a 75 word bio and a hundred uh, word bio and really write down to the word, keep cutting. It's a great exercise in editing and learning what's important. So uh, to both of you, what's the difference between a bio and a tagline? I keep hearing this tagline stuff all the time. What does that really mean? I know people have- Tagline asked is for marketing. Tagline for marketing, that's it's sort of, um, you hear that brands use that, um, right? A commercial, it's a, you hear it in TV commercials, for example, or radio commercials. 
most writers don't need a tagline. Right. Um, yeah, but, but um, a, a few do, but most don't. That's kind of, um, that's someone who lost their job in brand management saying there's a lot of authors. I bet I could work with authors and then telling authors they need a, a tagline. Yeah, I, I was I was uh, uh, going to be in a, an event and I was asked for a tagline and it was very confusing to me. I didn't know, what am I supposed to do a tagline for? <laughs> Better living through chemistry, you know, General Electric. What is that, right? Um, <laughs> any more questions from the audience? Of course. Um, so we have a question from Bella and she's talking about like the many changes that might happen in one's life. And she wrote... I really like the point that we are always changing. What about a scenario when you, where you are a completely different person than who you were and you don't want to share major parts of your life? For instance, um, for example, you worked heavily in politics and profile um, high profile politicians, but now are completely apolitical and do not want to offend anyone. And are you going to be accused of withholding info one day if you don't reference a huge part of your life in your bio? Ah, Jenny, what do you think? Well, I'm going to go back to my audience again. It's who you are addressing it to and what is what is the purpose for your bio. If the purpose for your bio is um, you're doing a presentation on your book or you're doing a launch of your book, then you're, you're there's no reason to focus on your past, uh, your past, you know, history. If having been um, a, a presidential aide uh, was important to the writing of, of your work, then that should be in there. So, I mean, you don't, you don't, just because you even become a public figure does not necessarily mean you have to reveal everything. I mean, there are a lot of people out there who, who have secrets. Well, why not join them? <laughs> I love that, <laughs> Joey. Well, um, I've spent 40 years in um, professional media, radio, television, magazines, newspapers. I wrote a relationship advice column. I've been on air at television. I've been a TV news producer. And I'm, so I'm going to answer this from a news perspective, okay? uh, because I think that's important. I and mean, we don't really consider it very often when we're writing our bios. And I think we should. So if you were well known working for a politician or in politics in some way, maybe just local politics, city council or something, and there was some controversy and that's why you've moved away from it or discomfort in some way and that's why you've moved away from it and you don't include it in your bio, you may make yourself suspect in the sense that if you are looking for press attention and you've omitted it, then it looks like a lie by omission even though it's not, even though you're just moving away. So I would, if you were my client, I would advise you then to put a line in, um, she's glad to have left politics far behind, or she's glad to have left politics in the 20th century, something clever and funny and just kind of a brush off. But I wouldn't avoid it altogether because all you're doing then is creating obstacles. You're, you're making people go, hey, in the newsroom, she didn't look at this. She didn't include it. What do you think's going on? Yeah, I'm not gonna, you know, right? So that that's an obstacle, if that makes sense. Yeah, I would also say that um, when I first started, because uh, it, it has to do with career paths and career changes as well. Because when I uh, came out of the classroom, um, I did have a line in my bio that that addressed that. You know that mm -hmm. I was, you know, this was a. Um, a, a second career path or whatever, just so that people who had known me as a teacher uh, would would be able to make that transition with me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, in that that's case, I think it could be helpful. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just going to say that I, um, like you, I well, I've had a lot of different careers, and sometimes I've done them all at the same time. I taught high school, and then at the night in the evening, I was a TV news producer. So. I, I think there's times when to, when you can do that and times when you shouldn't. And I, I think it goes back to what you've kept, you know, you've said repeatedly, audience, audience, audience. Who is this bio going to be seen by? Yeah. Nico, any other questions? Yes, we do have one from Lynn. What are some tips for crafting a bio for the back of a book? 
Ah, the back matter. Jenny. Should be very short, very concise. Uh, I would avoid all of the, um, your, your master's degrees and all that, unless you think that this is just too important, but I would really avoid that and just talk about the writing of that particular book. Very Joel. concise. I think one of the important things to consider is what media market you live in, um, because that can make a huge difference in the opportunities that your book brings you or doesn't. So um, the top, like the Bay Area is, I think it's five or six now. Um, they were overtaken by another media market. But if you don't know what a media market is, just Google it. Uh, there's a Wikipedia page. We don't have a lot of time to get into it right now, but it will give you a chance to decide how you include or don't include where you live. Um, so for example, if you live in Sonoma, you may wanna say Northern California or even better near San Francisco. So that's one of the things to consider for the back of your book. Uh, other than that, yes, keep it very simple. If you're a member of organizations that are literary organizations, please don't include those things on the back of your book. It just makes it um, it just makes it long and weird. So that that's not the right place for that. So when do when is it appropriate, or is there a is it just the author's decision uh, to put uh, in their back matter a bio or uh, a synopsis of the book? I mean, are, so if you're if you're putting a, a something in the on the back of your book, the book cover, the back cover, should it be a bio or should it be um, uh, a small summary of of what the book's about? Um, so the 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 on the back cover of a book is the first is statement, the hook, right? The hook, right, right. A, a summary of the book, a synopsis, you can call it then. And then a two sentence or three sentence bio about the author. Both are included. Both are yes. included. Yeah. I would agree. Uh, you always yeah. want to have that on the back. Yeah, you right. can have another bio in the interior pages yeah. at the end, of course. Yes, it's traditionally done that way. But when someone gets, you know, we do judge a book by the by its cover. So we do look and we look at, read a little scan or something about the author. So both are important. Right. Any other questions from the audience, Nico? Yeah. So um, I think um, there's a few um, participants who are wondering about the value of inclu including certain things. One um, participant asks if you have editorial and publishing experience that's not literary, for example, corporates. Is that worth including at all? And also just social media links, is that also worth including? Ah, Joey, what do you think? Well, social media can come and go. Um, you know, <laughs> Twitter became X. I wouldn't include my social media links on the back cover of a book. Uh, that's me. Maybe a workbook that I'm going to update a lot, but I wouldn't include yeah. it in the book. Um, so... Uh, if you have experience unrelated to, let's say you're writing a novel and you're wondering, should I have all this corporate writing experience? Should it be part of my novel? No, unless your novel is about corporate intrigue, then possibly right. some of it, a very brief mention is useful. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it goes back to um, if you were a, you know, a corporate writer, editor, uh, you know, is this a career transition? You have to ask yourself that because if it's a career transition and it has to be in there, then it might be a phrase, right. um, you know, but it's, but it definitely does not. Uh, when people look at the back of the book, they are simply, they're looking to see, I think if an author has published before, if they have other books, perhaps where they're, they originate, um, you know, and today, because of, of the rise of self-publishing, um, and actually it's probably in, almost in its zenith right now, people come from all walks of life. But what people want to know is, you know, what, you know, what, why are you writing it? What is the purpose in writing it? And what is the book about, according to you, the author? Sounds good. Any more, Nico? Sure. Um, we have a question about 
Is there a benefit or plus to stress in our bio a U.S. regional angle to stand out? For example, um, there's a trend in contemporary literature. Uh, for example, a J.D. Vance book or an Appalachian region regional book. Uh, that's the question. Ah, I'm not sure I, I under, quite understand that question. Is uh, Jenny? Did... Yeah, that that actually belongs in uh, book categories rather than on the back of your book. Oh. Um, and I think it could be placed if you're writing the, a bio, you could say uh, American Appalachian writer, uh, John uh, Forbes, uh, you know, and then and then go on to discuss that. And, and unless it's central to um, the themes or the setting of the book, then it belongs in the synopsis. But if it has really basically nothing else to do with it, then I would leave it out. Depends oh. on what the purpose is. Joey? Yeah, if you're writing, say, Southern Gothic novels and you want to show that you have a personal experience of um, Southern life, then it might be helpful in that regard. But you have to also be careful that you plan to stay in that lane and you're not just pigeonholing yourself, right? Right. We see so many times in Hollywood actors will complain that they've gotten, you know, this one plum role I and after that they can't get any other role. So I would I would just keep that in mind. Um, don't don't think because you've written one book, then you are now an Appalachian writer, right? So right. make sure that you've got a body of work and um, that you're you're actually being honest about who you are. So let me let me pose this question: What are the some of the missteps that you've encountered in in bio in reading bios, and what are some of the um, funnier things you you've seen, uh, Jenny? Well, I think too much information is basically the one that um, a well, you know, and I always relate to everything I've done myself because I've made every mistake in the book <laughs> every day, all the time. So, you know, with humility, what I will say is, though, people tend to put in too much. Um, they put in too much that is irrelevant to what they're doing. Uh, if you had an inspiration when you were five to write a book. You know, and it, it it really and it has no central value at all to to I mean, it, you know, I can say, you know, a lot of people ask, I'm sure every author here, they say, well, what inspired you to write? Why did you become a writer? Why did you pick up that pen? And of course, most of us will say, well, in childhood, I was quite a reader you know, and that and we, we stumble for those those ancient days when, you know, we got inspired. But I don't really think those kinds of things are necessary uh, in in your bio. Joey, I agree with you there. I think one of the most boring things you can put in a bio is I've always wanted to write a book or, you know, Joey <laughs> Archie has always wanted to write a book. Um, yeah. So I've seen a lot of missteps because I teach this workshop. Right. So. Yeah, right. So I think um, I think one of the the things is these are all we've, we've discussed these, but including um, your degrees because you're proud of them, including career information. Um, I was general ma me Joey. I was general manager of the public of public relations for the U.S. and Canada for a Fortune 500 company. It's not in my bio, right? It was so long ago, right? So so really, if there, you curate those bios. Um, typos in bios, um, um, being too general because you want to look important. Um, so I think it's better to have a bio that is scant, that is short, than to have a bio that is just vague and goes on and on. And one thing I would invite everyone to consider is um, how your bio sounds. So can it be used to introduce you, for example, on a um, television or radio show? Uh. Um, another thing to consider, I think, and another, another misstep is how professional you are in regards to your bio. So let's say um, you haven't taken the advice that Ginny and I are offering today and you, you've got a page long bio or three quarters of a page bio. When I used to interview authors on the radio, 
I would ask for a bio. I would I would say send me two or three sentences. I would get those you know three quarters of a page, and uh, that that writer or author would say, and even famous authors would say, just edit it and use whatever you want. It's not my job to edit your bio. Right. I'm, I'm the interviewer. So those kinds of things are huge missteps that um, make. You know, they, that might make you no longer an opportunity, you know, no longer an uh, okay. interview opportunity. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I would agree. I think that um, when you are presenting any aspect of yourself, a biography or any uh, element of, of that, I would really make sure that it has been professionally uh, looked at, even uh, because if it's your first time out, because you're going to learn how to do it on your own anyway, but, but having a coach or even if, if that's not feasible for you, then at, at a minimum, take it to a critique group and have them check it out because there is a collective wisdom out there about this. Yeah. An honest critique group. An honest yes. critique. Because so yes. many times in critique groups, I think people um, don't want, they want, to hear nice things about their own work so they say nice things about other work other people's work you want to make sure just tell people just be honest with me yeah 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 right nico i think i saw another question pop up we got time for another sure um so barbara asked what differences are there between bio related um uh, between bios that are related to promoting a book versus bios that are for a journalist or writer promoting themselves Mayo. Hmm. Jenny, what's a Mayo? <laughs> what? Well, if you're self-promoting um, and in in the at least the literary establishment, I mean that has to do with your book or your work in progress or your work in the literary community. Um, that would be my take on it. Um, because you have to figure you're showing up at a table where everybody there is either a reader or a writer and so or a publisher or editor but honestly you want to present yourself in that light and that's that's why I wouldn't just put in a, a myo and have that suffice so if I was uh, submitting a, a bio that I wanted to use to promote my journalism career, and I worked I worked as a journalist, as I mentioned, so it would just focus on the places where I worked, the names of those places, right? Um, as well as any journalism awards that I've received. And the focus is on journalism. And then there might be one last line that says, she also writes fiction. That's what I would do. I would not then go ahead and list the fiction and so on, because in the realm of journalism, it's going to look like I'm not serious about journalism. Mm -hmm. So yeah. again, you want to make sure that you're in the right lane. Mm -hmm. Right. The lane is important. Yeah. Jenny, did you have something you wanted to add? No, I just opened my mouth and then closed it. <laughs> Nico, any more audience questions? Of course. Um, so um, one participant asked if there are any exemplars that they can look towards for a first-time indie author's bio for their website. Any examples, Joey? Um, I would say come to my workshops. <laughs> I don't know that I can point you to a particular person at this time. No. Um, yeah. Well, Jenny? I think that, yeah, I would just like to plug Joey's workshops uh, because I have sat in audiences um, and known Joey for many years. And what I would say is that she's thorough. She's going to give you um, all of these wonderful tips and often includes practices that you can then field test. And um, you really, I mean, I think you have a leg up if you, if you go to a workshop like that. Um, there are other websites that you can visit that may have uh, tips and techniques. Um, I'm thinking of Jane Friedman's um, blogs, um, Electric Speed. Um, and I believe if you went on her website, Jane Friedman, uh, you probably would be getting 
some tips and techniques along those lines? Yeah, good point. I find though most of what I've seen myself online related to writing a writer's bio or an author's bio um, doesn't keep the media perspective in mind. So a lot of good good books that would and, and great authors and writers that would otherwise be interviewed don't get interviewed because they're listing, um, you know, again, write maybe writers conferences that they've spoken at or things like that that have nothing to do with the media. And the media is going like, what is she talking about? Uh, Kenyan review, what's that, right? So it's, you know, right. the lane issue. So it actually acts as an obstacle. So let me ask you uh, both, um, do you have anything you'd like to add that you weren't able to, to share so far today? And where can people find you so they can get some help? Jenny? Well, uh, I'll be at the San Francisco Writers Conference along with Joey and uh, in the editor's room. And um, I'll also be on different panels. Uh, and I'm at www.jennygrossenbacher.com. Uh, if you need to uh, ask me for a consultation, I'd be happy to help you. Um, one last parting word I would have not to steal from Joey's minute is that um, make sure that you spell check, that you edit it so that you're putting out your very best self, that each sentence in your bio is, is grammatically correct. Great, great advice. Joey. Yeah, so important. Thank you, Ginny. Um, JoeyGarcia.com is my website. You can find me, yes, at the San Francisco Writers Conference. I'll be doing a couple of sessions on building platform. And I was um, mentored in platform building techniques by um, three literary agents. So I really feel like I can offer you some helpful information. And you're welcome to join my uh, newsletter, which I would love. And you can email me, joey at joeygarcia.com to join the newsletter. You can join it from my website, or you can email a question that maybe you didn't get answered here today. I'd be happy to help. Thank you both so much. This has been wonderful. I've learned so much now that I know I have to go back and rewrite all my bios. But now I know how to do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nico and Mechanics Institute. And thank you, audience, for being here. It's been a pleasure. Um, I just wanted to end by saying, um, if you are interested in getting some feedback on your bio, please do join us for our upcoming Writers Meet where you will be bringing two pages to get feedback and also give feedback, right? So that is a perfect opportunity to meet other writers in person and to get feedback uh, in real time. And also please do remember to mark your calendars for our next Writers Lunch on Friday, February 16th for the topic writing about love and loss and relationships with Lauren Alwyn, Leslie Kirk Campbell and Nona Caspers. Um, before we go, I just want to do another round of applause for our wonderful panelists today and our wonderful moderator, Cheryl. We hope to see you at the same time on our third Friday um, in February. Take care, and we will see you again soon. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.